Hello, uh, my name is Tanya Kovats and I am Professor of Drawing and Making at Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design, University of Dundee. I'm an artist and I'm going to share with you some of uh, the projects that I've made. All my work is about landscape and I think art's really important to help us negotiate our relationship with the non-human world. I'm going to show you some images. This is a work called, a sculpture called Strike. My training is, in, is um, background is in sculpture. Uh, and all my work uh, at this point looked at the sort of geological forces that make up la landscape. So not necessarily what we do to landscape, but how landscape makes itself. And I would model landscapes and cast them into another material and then frame them in a plinth. So the plinth would reference the white cube of the sort of spaces we look at art in, the gallery space. But instead of the plinth supporting a sculpture, so something on top of the plinth, the plinth would have been eroded and tilted, in this case, uh, through a kind of geological force that I pretended had happened to it. The next work I'm going to show you is a work called Meadow. I moved a wildflower meadow from Bath to London via the inland waterway systems, so via the canal. This was a work that posed a question. The question was, as you move through a landscape, does it move through you? What is the exchange we have when we move through places? So I travelled with this work. It took a month to get from Bath to London. And we ended up in the east end of London in the canal spaces that were local to me at the time. The end of the work, I put the meadow back. The next image is of a work called Tree. I made this work in 2009 to celebrate Charles Darwin's bicentenary. It was commissioned from the Natural History Museum in London and I made it after a period of time travelling in South America and researching in Darwin's footsteps. I took a 200 year old tree and sliced a four millimetre section through that tree, through the roots, through the stem, through the branches. It came from a sustainable source in a well-managed woodland and we planted 200 oaks in response. The page of Darwin's notebook that you can also see in this slide is the place where he first visualised his theory of evolution, which is one of our best ideas for explaining where we came from and how we got here. The next image is of a work called Rivers. For this work, which is housed at Jupiter Artland just outside of Edinburgh, I collected river water from a hundred different rivers around the UK. I see water as an incredible connecting element in the landscape, flowing from one place to another. And these waters wouldn't normally be in confluence with each other, they would be separate. But for this work, I've housed them in a specially built boathouse. And so you view the work over water and taking this moving dynamic element and making it still. The next work I'm gonna show you is a big sister to rivers. It's called All the Seas, and I made it with the Fruit Market Gallery in Edinburgh for my show there called Oceans. I wanted to collect water from all the world's seas and bring, them to, bring those waters to one place. I couldn't do this on my own, so for this work, we mobilised a, a global network of water collectors. So a work that in some ways started with a very personal relationship with the sea, how I feel about my relationship with the sea, became a collection of many people's relationships with the sea. And I chose to present the work quite like a sort of library of water. The next image uh, is an image of a book that I wrote in, and that was published in 2014 called Drawing Water, Drawing as a Mechanism for Exploration. Drawing is central to my practice, how I teach, how, and it's what I write about. 
Uh, I see drawing as an essential tool of visual thinking and communication across many disciplines, not just for artists. This is a collection of drawings that are all searching for something uh, housed within the cover of this book. And I they all reflect in some way or other on our relationship with water and the sea. I was the James Lovelock Award holder um, in 2015, and it gave me a chance to research uh, Gaia theory in relation to the world's oceans. My response to that research was to make three large uh, bowls in the shape of the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. And I rusted these bowls with salt water. Gaia theory is the idea that the planet itself is the largest living organism on the planet and is made up a, of a whole range of vast interconnected systems. Um, Gaia theory was particularly important when we're now considering how much stress that planet is under. The next image I'm going to show you is of the large ceramic work, wall-based work, uh, that's one of my drawings of water. I, can't, I don't really feel I ever paint the sea, but what I do is I paint the energy and flicker of light on water and the energy of water in movement. These are my sea mark drawings. It's a drawing I've made many times, but in this case, I've made it onto ceramic, uh, the sort of ceramics that we tile our interior wet spaces, um, bathrooms, kitchens, swimming pools. Um, and the work is a drawing that I make towards the horizon. The horizon line for me is my favorite place, that line between sea and sky the line that is the future, an utopia. I took that same sea mark drawing uh, onto ceramic again to make a drinking water fountain. This was a commission from Design Exhibition Scotland who are on a mission to reduce the use of single-use plastic. Um, this is a drinking water fountain where you can fill up your water bottle. One of these will be going into the fruit market gallery when it reopens later this year and one of them is in the government art collection. The work is called Well. The next image I want to show you is of a, a casting of a bell. I was invited by the National Trust to make a work that celebrated their custodianship of coastal landscape. And instead of making a work about a particular place, I wanted to make a work about our tides. The tides in the UK are an incredibly dynamic and varied force. Uh, the tide arrives barreling in off the Atlantic uh, as a bulge of water. And then high tide splits and makes a journey around the UK, its coastline. So I cast a bell where high tide arrives working with an itinerant foundry to cast the bell on the beach as a public event. This bell was dipped into the sea the following morning as it came out of its mould. You're meant to baptise a bell, it's traditional. And then that bell was exhibited in London at Somerset House, right next to the River Thames. So at the moment of high tide on the river, uh, the bell was rung by members of the public. And I wanted that work to mark time in a different way, in ways that are much older and more elemental than the clocks and watches and phones that we carry. So thank you for listening. That's me exchanging some of my projects. I look forward to uh, sharing more with you in the future about things I'm working on currently. Thank you.